on here. And I was just on the last video before I deleted it and started over, I was telling um, a couple of the people that have logged on that I've known you since what we were like 10. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And so it's just really cool to be able to work with you now, mm -hmm. but also know that this topic that we're talking about, I've actually watched you go through it and come out of it and understand and embrace it. Yeah. And that's fear. Yeah. And that's how to go into fear and to take it and to just use it instead of running yeah. from it. And so I'm going to let you introduce yourself and the topic and a little bit about yourself. And then we'll dive into some of the meat of it. Okay. But um, stoked to have you here. And everybody, I'll hand it over to Kate. Thank you. Yeah, I'm stoked to be here. Um, as you say, Caroline, fear is something that I have really learned to become um, friendly with, let's say, because, you know, I started <laughs> out my career um, with no grandiose dreams of going to the Olympics. No, um, I didn't come from a particularly athletic family. I have no history of swimming in my family. Um, and I started out swimming, actually overcoming a fear. And that fear was of trying something new. And in that experience, um, I mentioned it in the post that, that we put up on the Facebook page, but I actually got bribed into swimming. When I was six years old, um, I, was, I, was, I had always loved the water. I was like a little mermaid swimming in the baby pool. And so my parents just thought it was natural for me to join the swim team. And when they suggested that idea, I was like, absolutely not. I, that sounds really uncomfortable. Um, surely the coach will be mean. I'll have no friends. The practices will be really hard and I won't be able to keep up. Um, I'll probably be the worst and I will likely drown. I was like, nope, nope, this is terrible. <laughs> but I was at the pool one day and I saw these older kids on the team trying on the brand new swim team swimsuit. And I was like, okay, that's kind of fabulous. It has fireworks on it. And I was six years old. And so I looked at that suit and I was like, I, I want it. It seems so cool. Plus I want to be like one of those cool big, big girls. And so I went over to my parents and I asked them for it. And they're like, of course you can have it, but... I was like, oh gosh. And they're like, but you have to be a member of the team. Remember that whole <laughs> swim team thing that we talked about? Like, that's how you get the suit. And so I was like, uh, okay, going back and forth, is the suit worth overcoming this fear or not? And they said, you know what? Here's the deal. Let's just take a baby step. Let's just see, just go to the beginning of the season pic picnic, see what that's like, see how the coaches, see how the teammates are, see if you like the practice, all of that. And then we can talk about this too. Let's just talk about like a baby step. Well, of course, as comes to fruition with most of our fears, the fear in my head was so much worse than the actual experience. And so I went there. Mm -hmm. I loved the coach. I made a bunch of friends. Um, I was actually one of the worst on my team, believe it or not. Um, I was one of the worst on my team, but it was all created all these fears were created in my mind, but actually when I faced that fear, it was not, it was not something that was worth being afraid of anyway. And so as I look back on that experience and, and throughout my career, what I, what I learned was that fear is not something that we should ignore. It's not something we should actually fear. We should not fear the fear. Fear is very normal, but it's how you harness that, how you experience that and how you approach that that really can create successful experiences or as in my yeah. my experience can really cause you to get into some uncomfortable negative experiences um and fail and fail so that's where, where did you know that it was fear at oh, the time no. like did you know that and how old were you I was again? six. I was six when I joined the team. So at this time, I don't think I was able to label that as fear. I can certainly look back on it now. But I think at the time, I was just like, this is uncomfortable. Mm. And yeah, it's the, yes, it's the, yeah, entirely. Okay, so t walk me through that. When you finally decide to join mm -hmm. the team and you join mm -hmm. the team, then what? What, were the, what was the process there? Like, what did that look like for you then being like, okay, I'm going to show up every day mm -hmm. and I'm going to try this thing, yeah. right? Like I'm going to try this thing called swimming, <laughs> this thing where I'm going to show up and I'm going to, I'm going to put myself in a situation where everybody may be better yeah. than me. What did that feel like for you? 
was that easy? Was that difficult? Once, what yeah, that like? that's a good question. Once I got over the initial fear or discomfort, let's call it at the time as, as six years old, didn't really know what it was, but the, uh, the discomfort I felt in trying something new, I really enjoyed it. And I think I had a few things going for me. Um, first being that I had parents who loved me and supported me so mm. fully and, and just, you know, pushed me just to the right point to try something new, to step outside my comfort zone and encourage me to fail, to keep trying. Mm. Um, I had that positive experience with my parents. I had a coach who believed in me and, and this, at this point it was just my summer league team. She, she's both my coaches just made it so much fun. And, yeah. and then finally I had teammates who were great friends, my best friends. And, and yeah. so the experience of not being the best of, um, of being challenged in practice of waking up early and sacrificing, you know, a little bit of sleep to do that. All of that was worth it because, um, because I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. My why was a really good yeah. why. And I think that's one of the really important things is mm. when we're approaching fear is like, you have to know your why and is it worth it? And at that point, my why was each day I want to go and I want to be a little bit better than I was the day before. And I want to have fun and I want to be with my teammates. And all of that was really positive. Right. Right. And that whole team camaraderie mm -hmm. feeling and knowing that you're going and you're being with, you know, you're with your friends and you have coaches that support you. That takes you so far and then you get scared again. Yeah. Right. Like you hit this fearful place again where you're like, Okay, I'm progressing. Mm -hmm. Now I have these expectations, mm -hmm. right? And so do you remember that pivotal point to where you kind of got really yeah. good <laughs> and then the fear changes? It's a little bit yeah. different. It's, it's, it's something where you're actually like, okay, I don't, I actually, this is real. Like, I don't really know how to handle this yeah. now. Yeah, so the fear, there was the initial fear of trying something new and then fully embracing that yeah. and realizing it was really fun and, and wanting to just be the best I could. And I'd set little goals. Like, mm. you know, I would get laughed every day in practice when I joined my year round team. I was a sprinter when I started out and then distance and the practices overwhelm me. And I would just set this little goal of, okay, I, I just want to be a little better than I was the day before. I want to, I don't want to get lapped. I want to keep up and start making the intervals. I want to move up in the lane. I yeah. want to leave my lane. And then I want to lead. I want to be the best in my group and then the best on my team. And then, huh, maybe I could be the best in Virginia where I'm from. And then, you know, continue building until there was this pivotal point where I was like, oh, wow, now I'm actually getting good. Like, good. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, so I made nationals for the first time. Okay, now people are starting to label me, not just Kate, you know, who swims, happens to swim. Now she's Kate the swimmer. Mm -hmm. And as soon as those expectations and as soon as that identity shift happened, which for me happened about, I became, started becoming aware of it about 14 years old or so. As soon as I yeah. took that role on, then that fun aspect of it started to be less and less mm -hmm. the why. And the why became because I have to prove myself because I have to be good enough. Yeah. And that's where that, yeah fear I, yeah, to yeah. enter in again. I remember that point for myself as well. And I think it was when I met you actually, <laughs> because I made nationals mm -hmm. when, well, I made juniors the same time you did, but my, I was in mm -hmm. breaststroke and then I didn't go. Yeah. Like I didn't go yeah. to juniors. I told my coach, mm -hmm. I don't want to go. I'm too scared. I'm yeah. not ready. I'm not mm -hmm. mature enough. I don't want to burn mm -hmm. out too early. Like I was, projecting all these things and these fears. And I, I thought that I needed to have this perfect confidence in order mm -hmm. to move forward. I also listened to myself and to my body, but you know, I remember meeting you at camp and I actually thought to myself, she's fearless. Like she doesn't care about anything. You can go forever hours. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm over here in, you know, in the breaststroke, I am group or, you know, whatever. And for other sports, it's kind of, a similar situation where you see somebody that can just go forever and you're like, Oh my gosh, I want to be just like <laughs> that, you know? And so I remember that with you, but that's something that's interesting because on the outside, it may have appeared that you were fine mm -hmm. and that nothing really scared you or you weren't fearful mm -hmm. of anything, but deep down on the inside, you felt like you had to prove yourself or that the expectations start to kick in. Mm -hmm. 
And then I have to train a certain way to compete a certain way. And then I have to do all these things a certain way because that's what I'm told that I need to do. Now that doesn't necessarily come from one person or, you know, one construct, but it's more the, your perception of what's being told to you and Mm -hmm. what's what you're trying to do. And then you taking that on. So at this pivotal point, would you say that you were trying to avoid fear? Like that you were trying to avoid scary situations or were you okay going into them knowing that you could fail? No, so it shifted over time. So it, it, it initially mm-hmm. it started with, okay, so I'm a little nervous right now, but this is worth trying. This is worth taking the chance mm-hmm. for. I will, I, mm-hmm. uh, something silly. This is very silly, but I remember when I was the first time I was, contacted I got the letter in the mail saying you're top 50 in the world so you're now subject to drug testing I remember and I was that. like <laughs> oh my god I was like mom what does this even mean yep. like I was like 15 yeah. I don't even know how old I, I was young and I was like oh my gosh yeah. what does this mean and, and we read through it and we you know understand uh, someone will show up randomly and they'll follow you into the restroom and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I need to, I need to quit swimming. And she was like, well, let's like yeah. let's pump the brakes a little bit. Like, let's learn, yeah. is, is, this a, is this fear rational? Okay. Mm-hmm. Is it worth mm-hmm. pushing through this fear to experience mm-hmm. what you want out of swimming? Okay. So, you know, a silly example, but something that was very real to me at that time, a fear that I felt thought about quitting swimming as a result of it. And then was like, okay, this is not a rational yeah. fear. This is worth every time. Let's push through it. But over time, that resolve that I had, along with that feeling of, I am an athlete. I am told to be mm. tough. Don't show your weakness. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't feel this way anyway. Yep. No one else is expressing this. Surely you're the only one. There's something wrong with you. Just be tough. That back up like you can do it yeah and and like you said Caroline I mean there I was throw any hard set at me fine no problem I'll do everything I can I'll grind I'll I'll train I'll sacrifice I'll do all that but to be vulnerable enough to say I'm scared I was like no you shouldn't feel that way and so I got this voice in my mind it went from okay like let's face that fear it's okay to okay now I'm really feeling fear but I'm not supposed to so just hide it pretend like you're fine to then where it eventually got to fear. I'm not labeling it. I'm not identifying it, but it is just ruling me. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you think there's a a happy medium between pretending like you don't Mm -hmm. feel it and stacking Mm -hmm. up and moving Mm -hmm. forward and, and, you know, getting the job Mm -hmm. done and then facing it and accepting it and understanding it? Like what, where's that barrier? Where's that line? Where, you know, I guess that's something that most athletes that I've spoken with recently and, you know, teenage athletes, it's like, well, at what point do you feel weak Mm -hmm. for being like, oh, it's, it's, it's cool. I'm just going to feel it and like feel it and like absorb it. And then that's too hoodoo voodoo. And then, you know, where's the line between that? And like, let's just stack up and like get this done. Like, do you find that you, you learned that during the show? Yeah, I, it took a, it took failing. Yeah, it takes a it while. It took failing pretty epically, yeah. and it yeah. took a lot of years and a lot of introspection and kind of figuring out myself, I think, to come to that healthy place where I right. came to accept, right. first and foremost, I think that what's really important to understand about fear is that it is healthy. It is a normal response. Mm. It is our our bodies trying to protect ourselves. Acknowledge mm. that. That's, a, that's okay. Mm. So it's okay. If there's no shame in being afraid. It's normal. Right. Acknowledging acknowledge it. it. So right. I think it's healthy to say. That's not weak. It is not weak. It is just saying, yeah. hey, I acknowledge this. Because the mm. true inherent danger in fear is not that we are weak but or that we will fail. It is that fear has this ability to play with our emotions and challenge our perceptions and challenge mm. our perceptions of experiences and of ourselves. And so I came to realize mm. fear has a place. Yep. And I'm just, I, I just need to acknowledge that it is healthy and then realize that fear falls on a spectrum from mild to absolutely paralyzing and need to understand myself on that spectrum where it is that I can health, healthily acknowledge fear, assess 
what to do with that fear and then harness yeah. it to use it either as motivation, as fuel. You know, we talk about, I talk with athletes all the time about fear. And if we don't feel anything, you can label it as fear, nervousness, um, excitement. You can mm-hmm. label it whatever you want to label. But if we don't feel anything, then we probably don't care enough. Mm-hmm. And a I little agree. bit, Entirely. a little yeah. bit is really good. A little bit, you know, you're giving a presentation or you're getting ready to race or whatever the case may be, you feel a little bit of nerves. That arousal is yeah. good. It yeah. means, it means it you're good. on, you're focused, right. you're excited. Right. It's just when it gets too high. That's right. right. There's like the spectrum of it. Okay. So before we dive into any more of yeah, the sorry. meat of it, would you say, well, no, it's, per- this is perfect. This is segueing nicely, but would you say that being fearless is a thing. Yeah, I, I well, for me, in my yeah. experience, maybe some people experience fearlessness, but I would say if you think that you never feel, you're never afraid. Either it's in my mind, you're pro- you're probably in one of two camps. Either you're staying way too safe, and and maybe you should push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone, where the sure. growth is, or you're probably feeling it, but you're labeling it as something else or you're just, you're backing up, you're being tough, you're pretending like it doesn't exist. But I think we all innately have some level of fear. Right. And so I think, and this is just my observation, but I think that when, you know, we throw around in our society right now, like be Mm -hmm. fearless, like be fearless. And it's like, well, yeah, but also no. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like you want to, you want to have a little mm-hmm. bit of fear. It does mm-hmm. fuel you. It does push mm-hmm. you. And so that you can find what, like what you said, where you fall on that yeah. spectrum so that you can use the fear in order to accomplish what you want and accept that you're mm-hmm. human and that you're going to feel things and that you can use that towards your racing, towards your competing, mm-hmm. etc. So on that note, tell me a little bit about, so we've talked a little bit about practice, camps, the whole, you know, the whole like process of how you've grown and when you did have that pivotal moment of, okay, all these expectations are now mm-hmm. on me and I have to figure out where, how to mm-hmm. use them in a proper way. How did that transfer into racing? Like when you felt that going into racing as you got better, you were at nationals, you're at international meet, you have fear, you're nervous. Do you have any one specific time or an example that you could share to where you were like, I can't do this. Like, I I don't think I can do this. Like, this isn't going to happen. Have, do you remember something specifically? Because I have at least a dozen oh, yeah. myself. So if there's one specifically that you want to share, just a little bit about competition nerves and kind of what your experience was with that and how you self-talked your way through that. Yeah, so... And maybe maybe a fail and a success, right? So how you did shift yeah. the expectation. Yeah, so um, the fail, the first fail that comes to mind is, is uh, unfortunately my biggest one, which was at the 2008 Olympics. Um, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. had, in 2007, broken multiple world records. I'd won gold medals as um, repeat gold, uh, world champion in the 800 and 1500 mm-hmm. meter freestyle. And I was you know, at the peak of my career. And it was also at the peak of my fearfulness and my inability to deal with that. Because at that point, I had come so far, I'd had so much success. And, um, and so many voices said to me, Oh, well, you're going to the Olympics. Oh, well, you know, you'll just break another world record. Oh, you'll the all these expectations and all this. Um, I, I, what I heard was pressure, but what I think was People were just, they were trying to support. They were trying to be excited there. But what I, all I heard was expectations, right. expectations, expectations. Well, at this point in my career, I was a year out from the Olympics and I was just slowly but surely crumbling inside because of all the fear that, isn't that interesting how it happens at the same mm-hmm. time? Yeah. <laughs> and it's very un- misunderstood mm-hmm. that, yeah, yeah. You, that's you assume that with success would come confidence, but success, mm-hmm. uh, success and self-confidence isn't something that we earn, <laughs> something that we learn. 
And, right. um, and so all that to say, I felt all this pressure. I felt all these expectations. I felt really fearful. I was terrified of failing, not just failing myself, but failing my mm. parents, my coaches, my teammates, my country, you know, all these people who followed me, who were cheering me on. I was so afraid. And I, I started to create these stories in my mind of, well, if you fail, you, you don't just fail as an athlete, as a swimmer, but you fail as a person mm. and you'll fail all these people. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately by the time I got to the Olympics I hadn't told anyone about this I just was kind of trying to fight it off deal with it and and it just kind of got to a point where it was a little too late and I got up on the right. box just paralyzed and and we can talk a little bit about you know what are those physical manifestations that happen when when fear takes us over and all of that happened for me and so that's where I would say that fail happened when, when I swam, I raced, I didn't race to my ability. I, I didn't race like the athlete I, I was um, because my mind just wasn't there. Um, but on the flip side, mm. as we talk about a success, I also remember very clearly um, the first time I won world championships and I was racing against all these huge names, huge names. And um, the day before I remember that I'm, too. I'm Montreal. I'm Montreal. <laughs> Montreal. Yeah. I remember watching you in the stands being like, I, yeah, I don't think I could finish a race that long. <laughs> well, and, and so what's funny is the day before, the day before, um, in prelims, I had like 20 seconds to my best time. And I was like, mm. oh my goodness. I qualified mm. in the, in, uh, I guess, lane one. And so I was like, oh no, this is not. I'm not going to go well. Yep. And um, I was so afraid because I was like, oh, gosh. Okay. So I've just swam really poorly. How am I going to turn this around? I don't know. I had a coach pull me aside and he talked to me and he said, are you feeling a little nervous? Like, yes, I'm feeling very nervous. And, you know, kind of mm -hmm. one of those word vomit things like yeah. this is everything that's going through my mind. Yeah. And he said, okay, yeah. let's go on a walk. We walked around the pool deck. We talked about, you know, what, what is your purpose here? It is to swim from point A and back as fast as you can, yeah. like you've always done before. And he, he, he helped, mm. he processed through those fears with me. He walked through it and he reminded me of the successes that I'd had in the past and what got me to that point. And, and, and he reminded me, you know, believe in yourself, stop believing in everyone else and, and focusing on everyone else, turn that in and, and focus on what you can control and what you can do in your lane. And, and just helping me through all that, got me to the point where I was ready and confident and back to that racing and back to almost that little girl mentality of, I'm just going to be the best I can today and just yeah. see what I can do and have yeah. fun with it. And I ended up dropping, you know, a ton of time off my, my best time and, um, and winning. Yeah. It's, I remember that first of all, <laughs> it was probably one of the most incredible races I've ever watched. Mm -hmm. um, and something I noticed, you know, first of all, two things your coach took you on a walk, not telling you it's not okay, but took you outside of the zone of the pool, not right by the lane, but outside to process things in a way that you do well processing, right? So you're a distance swimmer, you're a distance athlete. The way that you process things may be moving and walking. And I find that interesting. I'm just taking mm -hmm. note of that, that that was something that was accepted so that you felt like, Hey, I'm going places. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm understanding, yeah. right. There's, there's a very mind body mm -hmm. connection there. Absolutely. Um, and the second thing that I noticed from the outside and for everyone watching, I was on a one fifteenth of, of a relay of what Kate swam individually. <laughs> I swam a relay at the world championships in Montreal. I was 18. You were 16, 16 uh -huh. or 16. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember the difference between prelims and finals. So to recap in prelims, you said you added 20 seconds, you felt horrible. I personally remember just because I'm an observer mm -hmm. and I like wasn't swimming mm -hmm. that day. So it didn't matter, but I remember sights and colors and people's energy. And I remember your energy shift, the way that you had fun and interacted with your world while also staying focused because that was your focus at finals was so, so very different mm -hmm. than it was when you were nervous mm -hmm. at prelims. And I remember you were just laughing and I remember your hand vividly being like, like when they said your name, just like ha yeah. you were happy. And my brother was the same way, for example, like we knew that he would swim well, 
when he would like be cheese and grinning, like walking yeah. out, you know, and I'm sure you remember yeah. just like, <laughs> like straight. And, but if he came out like oh, super yeah. intense, and that may, that may work for some Absolutely. people. Totally works for some people. You know, you see Michael Phelps, like with his headphones mm -hmm. on and all serious, like you see Usain Bolt, everyone's different, mm -hmm. but for you specifically, you needed to interact with your world and you needed to feel that you were making movement and making and putting that energy toward your racing. Like that was you, you had fun with your friend going back to your childhood. You had fun with your coaches. You had fun with fun mm -hmm. with the sport. When it got too serious, fast forward, 2008, you brought yeah. that up. I was in a suite with oh, you. Oh yeah. I remember how nervous you were, but for you, it felt more like I'm doing this for something, somebody Absolutely. else, for other people, Absolutely. for the world, mm -hmm. not for Kate. Like I'm losing why I'm doing mm -hmm. this, you know? And so one of the questions that you posed on the post that your athletes ask you is I'm afraid of letting everybody down. What if I fail? What do you answer? Like when an athlete says, I'm afraid of letting everybody yeah. down. And if you think back to that moment in 2008 where you were like, I feel like I'm going to let everybody mm -hmm. down. What would you give, what advice would you give to them in that moment? And, and yeah, for that, so, this is a long process. It's not just one bit of advice. It's, it's mm -hmm. a process. And that's what I want everyone. I stress when I coach my athletes and everything too, this isn't a one quick fix. It's not like you yeah. just tell somebody something and then you're like, guess what? You're not going to let anybody down anymore. It yeah. takes a long time. Yeah. But what's the first thing that you can say to help them? Yeah. So the first thing um, that I did when, like you said, I, I, my, so much of my fear came from, I am so afraid, not actually of losing mm -hmm. a race, but I am so afraid of letting everyone down, which means I will be rejected, which means I will not be loved, that I am not good enough. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that when we talk about fear of failure, um, one of the things that was really important to identify is what are you actually afraid of? And then secondarily to remember that failure isn't real. Failure is a, con a construct that we create in our mind. Um, and so how can you redefine what that story is that you're creating in your mind, mm -hmm. what that failure is? Like I, I said to myself, I win a gold medal or I'm a failure wait a second, let's celebrate the success that happens yeah. with, yeah. hey, you made it to the Olympics. Hey, you're racing for your country. You've had so many successes in, in the past already. Remember that how you define failure is up to you. How you define success mm -hmm. is up to you. And so identifying what it is you're afraid of, and then if I'm afraid of being rejected, say, wait a second, is that real? Like, will your parents actually not love you? Will, will your friends actually not care? Will you actually be a failure? No, you, you might be disappointed that your race didn't end up the way you wanted, but that in no means is an indictment of your character or who you are. Right. And so step back. So what is that? What is it you're actually afraid of? Is right. there truth in that fear? If not, well, let's talk truth. Let's speak truth to that fear. Mm -hmm. And then let's mm -hmm. redefine what success is. And let's set you up for success. Um, right. And as we, those are first through, yeah, I know you asked for just a first couple steps, but along the no, way. No, that's, that's, that's perfect. So absolutely. It's kind of like that four step process, right? Like define what you're feeling. What's the mm -hmm. sphere that you're feeling? What are you in control of? What are you not in control of? And how do you redefine it? Like, what's another word you can give yep. to it? And Or image. Like, what can you create in your mind that's different than that fear? What's on the other side right. of that? If that's how, you know, like redefining to make it a positive yeah. thing. Like, you use exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. It's not something to run no. from. And yeah. I think, again, when you're feeling fear, first thing that I think is really important mm -hmm. to do also is take the power away from that fear. The fear becomes bigger and bigger and bigger as we tell ourselves stories within our own mind of all the what ifs might happen. Yeah. And so if we say it out loud, if we yeah. talk to someone who's safe, you know, that coach who knows us well enough to walk us away and to get us moving, that friend mm -hmm. like you, Caroline, who if I had said, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I look back on it, if I'd just spoken up, I, I may have very well had different experiences 
at, at, in Beijing, you know, look for those people, say it out loud, help them help yourself by reaching out, by being a little vulnerable to the safe people who can help you process that fear. And that's a big thing you just brought up, vulnerability. So backtracking to what we talked about earlier, it's okay to say, I'm freaked <laughs> out. <laughs> it doesn't mean that if you say, I'm freaked out, that you're going to do mm -hmm. poorly. If you say you're freaked out and then spiral as to why you're freaked out and you're going to do poorly, then chances mm -hmm. are you will. I've been mm -hmm. there a million times. Yep. You've been there a million times. I think it's very mm -hmm. natural. But it's the identification doesn't mean that the execution is going right. to be the same right. way. And so when you identify the feeling, you're allowed to mold it and shape it. And some, when you get really mm -hmm. good at it, that takes like yeah. a minute. Sometimes that takes 10 yeah. seconds. At the beginning, it takes yeah. five hours, five yeah. years, you know, whatever. But once you get good at it and you train your brain to say, what is it? What can I control? What can I cannot? What can I not control? How do I move this and reframe mm -hmm. this? Period. Like that does wonders because people think in linear, step, yep, yep. step by step process. Yep, linear process. That's great. And I, I mean, honestly, seeing you and your career go in that pattern, and then also seeing you have a harder time in two thousand eight, mm -hmm. and then come out mm -hmm. of that, and and see you understand that like no one can take away what I've done mm -hmm. and nobody can take away who I am personally, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a failure. Mm -hmm. Kate Ziegler yeah. is not a failure. Like just because I dive in in a swimsuit and don't go best time doesn't mean that I'm losing friends and family yeah. and everything. Like, of course not. That's, that's great. I think that's really fantastic. And do you ever work in images? Like when you think about a fear, do you ever think about it as, like a thing or like it, what pops to your mind when you think about like tough times? Is there like something in particular? What do you mean? When you, you say personally? tough times, what do you mean? Um, 2008, let's say, or, you know, when you, when you think about something that terrifies mm -hmm. you in your career and you think back to your mm -hmm. career, what is it that you picture when you picture that? Like for me, I literally picture like negative comments, like coming yeah. out of my head or, you know, like, like different or different things or different faces that, that I would create that people would give me mm -hmm. if they were disappointed in me that weren't yeah. true. Like nobody yeah. did that. <laughs> like I, I created these like negative things. And then once I was allowed to, cause we all think mm -hmm. in images, like people think mm -hmm. in images when you can change that image into like a positive thing, like yourself standing on the podium or in the warm down pool after, or like with a big, piece of cake or you know like when you picture things that you do yeah. like it creates more of a fun situation and you're not so scared of yeah it anymore. and that and that's one um, of the things yeah I know it's an abstract question no but... no I think it's a great one because it, it leads into one of the things that I think is really important for using when we are feeling fear which is visualization which is imagery and yeah. I think that yeah. um in a combination I, I do I use visualization and imagery in two ways number one is the actual picture and then is it is the language that I put to that picture. And yes. so yes. initially, with it, using the 2008 experience, if I look back on that and probably the images that I was facing, it was, it was like a big, dark cloud looming over me, um, ready mm -hmm. to just steal all joy out of the experience. And that dark cloud was, was filled with all the negative comments you're not good enough. You're not fast yeah. enough. You're not, um, it, and those negative comments branched out at just my performance. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not wh whatever. All these negative comments would just swirl mm -hmm. around every day. And I felt, and the image that I also have is like an image of hopelessness and helplessness. Like I didn't have the tools that I needed to combat those voices. And I wasn't, I didn't, I, I almost felt like everyone around me already saw me as like in one way, everyone saw me as a success and thought I should be better. So there was that, but on the other side, it was like, okay, but I'm living this. I'm, I'm like almost a fraud because they'll soon see that I actually yeah. can't be all that. Interesting. Interesting. And then that goes back to the proving mm -hmm. thing. And the reason I bring this up is because you, you mentioned something else saying, 
I can't be confident unless I've had success. I know my nerves are holding me back. How can I, how can I start being confident now as an athlete asking Mm -hmm. you that? And then that leads me to believe that visualization is something that you can use Mm -hmm. for confidence. The reason I bring this up is because I feel that you think similarly, and this is something that we teach the athletes and that I think you and I both learned really well is that when you can attach uh, and not a, maybe attach isn't the right word, but when you can put an image with words that feels tangible, you're able to either get rid of it or use it mm-hmm. easier. Yes. Right. So if I have this pencil and this pencil symbolizes really bad negative things, I can easily throw this pencil mm-hmm. away. And the act of throwing this pencil away is helping me release yeah. that. So something to do sometimes is to, to pinpoint what is it that I see when I see negative images? Because if we can have something tangible, it's easier to get yeah. rid of. I think when we have all these words and thoughts, it's like, how do I like get rid of, like, it's just so much yeah. noise. Like, I don't know how to like pin it, like fish it. and pull yeah. it out. Like you can't catch it. It feels like it's not yeah. tangible. So speak a little bit to that in terms of confidence and how to foster and manifest. Absolutely. Confidence. I think that um, one of the most important things, sorry, I live downtown where a train comes through every day. <laughs> I can hear the train. Um, <laughs> I think, I think yeah. one of the really important things that you've just hit on is, first of all, putting some tangibility to those thoughts, to those all those words that are fishing through our head, because yeah. we do that. We do that. And so whether that is, I have my athletes write down, get it out of their head somewhere. So write it down, take a video, record it, do something, something to get it out of their mind. Tell someone, tell me, tell, tell anyone, get it out. And then the, the next step is to somehow replace that. So the, the, one of the techniques right. I like is the air technique. So become aware, interrupt the thought, replace it. And you can do that in a visualization. One of the visualizations we've done is on a chalkboard. You, so close your eyes, write whatever, yeah. write on the chalkboard. Imagine yourself going up to a chalkboard and writing that, what you're telling yourself, what that fear is on the chalkboard. Yeah. Look at that for a moment, then take the eraser and erase it. Clear that talk board. It's like the actual the act. Actual of doing act. It, right? so we're going to visualize that. And then right now on that talk board, what that positive affirmation is. And affirmation being something that is very personal to me, for, written in the I language, something that is present tense. I am doing this. I am this person. Something that's positive and something that is action oriented. Writing that on the board and seeing yourself doing that. And then the other thing that I have them do is go stand in a mirror, look at the mirror, and say, I yeah. am this, I, you know, affirm themselves because when you're talking about self-confidence, like I said, it's, it's, you don't earn it. If, it. if there's anything from my story, it's that I was at my most successful point and I had the least confidence in myself. Sometimes that yeah, we earn and just Absolutely. practice it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you honestly, you hear about mo- so many athletes that have had that same mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. You know, you're at your peak. It doesn't matter if it's the Olympic games or if it's state A's or if it's just, a college dual me or anything, if you're at a place where you're just crushing mm-hmm. it and you still feel like something is missing, like that's okay. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to have all your ducks in a row to perform. It just means that when you do have the time and the ability to talk about what it is that you feel mm-hmm. through that process, then you're able to pinpoint mm-hmm. it, put something to it and work right. through it avoidance and pushing it aside, which you sometimes have to do in order mm-hmm. to compete. Mm-hmm. You, but then going back to that, I think that's the key that we're hearing out of these experiences from you as well. Is it's like, you can only push it aside so right. long. Your confidence wanes right. from that, you know, like you have to address that, fill yourself back up again, instead of just like weeding through everything and being like, deflect Mm -hmm. deflect like that's that's only good for so long to get the job done and then there's that line we talk about stack up get the job done but then acknowledge Mm -hmm. yeah and go through it that's a really and I think that's something really important that you you spoke to just a moment ago which is that we're not talking about focusing on this and this only focusing on fear 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 it's just saying okay we're gonna you're feeling something denying it is only going to work for so long so let's just acknowledge that let's label that and then now let's move to how we can positively move forward with 
visualizations mm. with breathing techniques to, to calm your body right. down with awareness of your self-talk and, and some techniques that we can do there with, um, with identifying your strengths, with looking at what's made you successful, with all these positive things, let's label it. And then let's use these really helpful tools, practicing those tools, realizing that it's not going to change overnight, but practicing, practicing, practicing. And you'll see that yeah. you'll start to move out of that fearful, all consuming fear and learn to learn yeah. to experience the fear and yet do whatever you're afraid of anyway, and to, to really thrive in doing that. Right. Can you speak a little bit to both how a coach or a parent or a friend helped you process this, kind of like what you spoke about when you walked around, but then also the importance of how you can use foster that yourself so that if that coach or that person isn't there, how you can either remember what they've said or tap back into that. Can you speak a little bit to that, like how it helps, but then how to foster that yourself yeah. as well? I think one of the keys in, in all of this is to create a support system around you, a support system that's really positive. And so that might come from a coach, that might come from a mentor, that might come from a friend, a parent, whomever. But have those people who are safe people. And I had a couple of those people. Um, one person mm -hmm. in particular that I can think of um, along with actually, I'll use this instead. This is really close to home. This is my mom. My mom is one of those people who I can tell anything to, and I can be really real and vulnerable. And I shared some of my deepest fears with her at one point. And this was after years of not sharing anything, just saying like, oh no, everything's good. I'm tough. I'm, I'm stuck. And I told yeah. her and I said, this is what I'm feeling. And she said, Kate, that, that's okay to feel that. All of, all of that is, yeah. all of that is valid but we can no longer allow that to limit you, to hold you back and to most importantly, right. make you blind to all your great qualities, all the successes that you have had. It, we cannot lo no longer have that be the dominant voice, which then mm. makes you blind and makes it so that you're not willing or able to celebrate everything great that you're doing. So true. Yeah. And, and so just yeah. having that, voice of reassurance and, and like I said, of acceptance and knowing that I am loved for who I am and, and I, I'm valued yeah. and I'm more than my swimming, that, that little affirmation started me down the path um, to overcoming those fears. But then also along the way, I learned these tools, like what we're talking about, about self-awareness, changing your thought, the visualization. Mm -hmm. I started to work on those tools with coaches or with with my mentor, with you, Caroline, yeah. let's, you know, you've helped me a ton. Yeah, we, we, we did. helped yeah. each other talking through this. I learned those yeah. things. And I practiced those things with those people who are safe and who, who helped me. So that once I was away from them, I was equipped with the tools that I needed to be successful. Because right. I think that's when I work with the athletes, I'm not there behind the blocks, I can't be behind the blocks or on the field on the soccer field or, or on on the court. But I know that week by week, we're working on these, we're working to, to equip them with the tools necessary to face the fears. I love be this. ready to perform. Well, and I think, yeah. And I think that there's, you know, we talk about this in a lot of, a lot of our episodes here, but the power of question mm -hmm. asking, because I think when those people could ask you questions, they were then fostering you to create your mm -hmm. own answers, which then helped you understand I can do this mm -hmm. myself. But then it also pushed you mm -hmm. in a way that it wasn't like they were like, it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to, to worry yeah. about anything. There's a, there's that right the line again of like, look, here's the deal. I want you to think mm -hmm. about this, but I think you're 100% valid yep. for feeling the way yep. you feel like supporting the feeling and using that and understanding yeah. how to use because that. I think and that it's not, it's not who you are. It's just something that's occurring yeah, within you. Because I think the people who are really great coaches, mentors, friends, support staff, they allow you to be yourself, but they push you to be yeah. even better than you are today. You know, yes, and, and that's exactly. a careful line. And it, it's not saying suck it up, just be tougher, be better. It's saying, I'm going to challenge yeah. you to be better. Because I know, I know you feel this and that's okay. That's I a know good, you feel yep. this. That's okay but I'm not going to let you stop there because I know you can do more. And yeah. let's, let's initially maybe walk together down that yeah. path until you little 
you know, little Bambi are off and running and, you know, doing your own thing. Right. Yeah. That's a really good point. I challenge you. Yeah. That's a really good point. Okay. So because we only have 10 minutes, a couple of people have asked questions, but we, we sort of answered Beth's about, um, having somebody help you walk through your fear coach Mm -hmm. or a friend or a mentor parent. Um, but Jennifer, hi Jennifer. hi Jennifer, uh, she says that this is actually something that I'm very passionate about because I felt this way and sometimes I still do, but an athlete that's uncomfortable about reaching the length of their potential out of nervousness that they're going to attract too much attention or be too good, right? Like the fear of being like, what do I do when I like get really good? Like, is that going to make people hate me or you know, if I win, I vividly remember, and this sounds so silly, but it doesn't matter what it is, what sport, what, what anything. If you, you know, worry that you're not going to be, you know, accepted or if someone's going to be mad at you, right? If you do well, if you perform really well, I think that's a real thing. Like there's fear in performing well, I you know, it, it's, it's a total opposite end of the spectrum, but I vividly remember being very nervous to perform yeah. well, that I was going to make other people upset at me if I beat them or whatever. And it's like, you know, but then at the same token, I'm scared of not doing oh, well. Oh, yeah. So it's like this oh, catch to I know. Too. Caroline, uh, talk about, yeah, uh, the tension. And not every athlete. Yeah. Well, and not every athlete is like out for blood. And like, oh. I'm going to beat everybody. Like, there are some that are like, I don't want to upset anybody. Like, I want to win and I know I can, but I don't, I don't want to win because I'm scared of, of letting other people down in that way that they would be upset yeah. with me. So do you have absolutely any thoughts absolutely on um Jennifer, great question. Uh really tough yeah, a really tough one. one to balance because I like you, Caroline, um I really care genuinely about people and my performance in, in swimming really started with I just want to be the best I can. That's all I want. It's not even about beating everyone else. It's just can I be a little better than I was the day before? And over time, I, as Mm -hmm. I said, I started to progress. And at one point I dropped six minutes in my mile over six month period, very Mm -hmm. quick progression. Well, at the start of that six month period, I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of girlfriends and um, I'd hang out with them after practice and everything was really good. And then I started to improve and improve and improve until the point where I realized that, I wasn't getting invited to events anymore. I was hearing little whispers in the locker room or like when I'd walk into the locker room, they'd stop talking all of a sudden. And I, at first I was like, okay, maybe I've done something wrong. Maybe did I say something? Did I do something? And and then it went to, oh, okay. I think it's because I'm getting faster and they don't, that's not good. I think there's, I, I think, I should slow down. Like the thought actually went through my head. Like mm-hmm. I shouldn't perform because I'd rather have friends. And I talked to a very wise person who, um, who said two things. Number one, holding yourself back is not actually helping the situation by being your best. Right. You're challenging them to be their best and holding yourself back is not, is not actually going to be a solution. They'll find something else. It is not because you are doing well, it's because they're feeling an insecurity within themselves. And while that is hard and while we care so much, Caroline, you, you are one of the most caring people I know, we care so much about what other people think and what, not hurting other people. If we are humble in our success, if we support mm. other people yeah. in their pursuit of their best, that's all we can ask for. But holding yourself back is, is not the solution. Yeah. And I, I firmly believe that you teach others, you know, like what you said, you're teaching them to not perform well, yeah. either. <laughs> like by your, everyone feels energy. So there's obviously a classy way mm, of yeah. doing it, right. But I think that, I mean, I, for sure, my parents have told me a million stories where I was like, well, I was afraid, like I, what, Carolyn, why do you look around at the end? And I was like, well, I didn't want to, I was too far ahead. And they were like, right. <laughs> you know, but at the time I was like, I'm going to upset right. my friends. Like, I don't want right. to be that way. And so I think when you can learn um, that you're teaching them to throw in the towel out of fear mm-hmm. of that, then we're all teaching each yeah. other that. 
all teammates teach yeah. each other that. And that's really not the way that you foster yeah. that. It's the support. It's okay to be, to feel that way again, but how do you then use yeah. that so that you can still be their friend outside of the pool, but if you beat them and they, you know, if, say there's a little bit of animosity there mm-hmm. for a while, which happens, I think every athlete's had a weird thing with their friend or at some point. My brother and I had a weird <laughs> thing when he finally started beating me when I was like 11. I was like, yeah. what? I was so mad. I was literally like sitting there, you know, like this, like for a solid yeah. couple weeks. And then finally I was like, okay, well, he's a boy. He's probably going to be uh, a little bit faster just because they're, yeah. they're stronger and they're bigger for yeah. right now, you know, whatever. So anyway, long story short, I think that it's very normal to have that mm-hmm. feeling, but it's understanding that it doesn't have to cross over into every area. You know, if, if someone gets faster before somebody else, it's learning that grace and that gratefulness mm-hmm. that you have somebody like that to train mm-hmm. with and that you have somebody like that to race against. Like that's right. an honor, right? It's an honor to have competition. Right. Competition should be an right. honor and it should be fun. Um, and you can still want to kick somebody's butt next to you and you can still feel really pissed off. If they mm-hmm. beat you, but it is an honor at the end of the day to have that opportunity to race them and to learn from them and they learn right. from you. So I agree with you. I think that's a really good point. And I think point. the other two things in that is it's actually disrespectful to like hold back and be like, Oh, you know what? Like, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to embarrass <laughs> you. So let me hold back. Like that's not, that's, that's not what we should be doing. But secondarily, right. I think we operate through two mindsets. One is from a, a perspective of abundance and one is from a perspective of scarcity. And the beauty about many, many sports mm. is that, Every day you have the opportunity to be successful, no matter what's happening with anyone else around you. Every day you have, you have the mm. opportunity to be the best you can and recognizing that there is enough success to go around. Granted, not everyone's going to win a gold medal. Not everyone's going yeah. to be first place, but we all have opportunities to be successful. And again, that, define, that depends on how do you define success? Are you, are you measuring success only by what other people are doing or are you finding an internal metric for success that yeah. then that's a great, say, I, I, sure. I, I won, but they also won because they won a best time or, or they hit more free throws than they've ever hit before or wh- whatever it is. Everyone yeah. can win and totally. celebrate those successes for, yeah. for everyone. Yeah. And I think that's a great point because I, you know, and, and this is actually a good wrap up point too as athletes progress, whether it was you when you were 12, 13, 14, or it's you when you're 24, 25, you're transitioning. We're always transitioning. It's never, even if you win an Olympic gold medal, guess what? You're transitioning right. after. It's going to right. be weird. Like it's going to be strange. Like it's not always going to be perfect. You have to re locate your identity and figure out what it is that you want to do. And I think that that constant circle and understanding that as an athlete you're gonna have Mm -hmm. that feeling that's a really good thing everybody says what I just want to be consistent I'm the biggest culprit I just want consistency Mm -hmm. I just want and then when I get consistent and when I get to I'm like all right so like what can I do to make myself better already you know so like that's that's absolutely (laughs) and that's the thing I think as we wrap up kind of the conversation on fear it's that again we want to feel safe we want to be comfortable yeah. But at the same time, if we're always comfortable, that means we're probably not pushing ourselves enough. And as right. athletes, it's it's learning to be comfortable with that uncomfortable challenge yeah. that we place upon ourselves to be better. Absolutely. Every time we're risking yeah. a little bit, but every time that you do that, you learn and you grow. And again, it's just it's just reframing yeah. that to say, you know, yeah. at each step along the way, I'm getting a little better than I was yesterday yeah I think it's just a human's way of learning to express Mm -hmm. themselves and everybody has a different way of doing that and so I think it's it's a beautiful thing if you think about it and actually this is a good I think we should do a follow-up one on extending fear like we just spoke about like really getting specific with like one certain area Mm -hmm. of fear and we can we can maybe pull the parents and the coaches and the athletes and everything just to see because I think it's a very important topic Um, and you know, I think something that we can take away from this is to just feel it, feel the fear and then learn what to do with it. That it's, it's actually a Mm -hmm. good thing. It's actually a very healthy human emotion. Mm -hmm. You are alive. Mm -hmm. And this is the last thing I'll say. It's super cheesy, but (laughs) if you think back to like, 
God, I mean, what? Like the Stone Ages? They were all yeah. scared. Like their life depended on survival, which is like a, a sense of fear. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they just curled up in a ball and like cried themselves to sleep. Right. Like they figured out how to survive right. based upon the fear that they were given to them in those mm-hmm. moments. And it's a very like, you know, different example, but it's the most basic example of human existence that we can possibly yeah. imagine. Like when you were in a fearful setting, like how do you use it? Not how do I like run right. from it, right? Right, exactly. So awesome. Okay, Kate, where can we find you? And is there anything else that you want to add as a little topper to this conversation? No, I think um, I think that this everything you've said, Caroline, that wrap up, feel it and then figure out how to move on from it. And, and I guess in, in saying that, you know, I think that's something that on with Rise that, that we do really well. And that's one of the places that I'm so passionate about is I hear mm-hmm. all the time from the athletes that I work with is, is that they feel fear and they, they feel a little helpless and they feel unsure of how to, how to deal with it. And um, my passion is helping athletes through that process so that fear doesn't so that you feel it, but it doesn't hold you back that you still thrive and that you still chase your dreams. And so um, I would love, you know, if there are any parents out there who have athletes or coaches out there who have athletes who are dealing with that, um, please connect with me. Uh, I'll give you my Instagram is Kate M Ziegler, Z I E G L E R. And then Mm -hmm. um, they're welcome to email me or, and it's Kate at, or log on, yeah, log page on his page and ask questions or the, on parent, the parent page. page yeah, yeah. Ask questions, um, go through rise anywhere. Okay. I would love to continue this conversation and help you however I can. Awesome. Thanks Kate. This is great. There's a lot of good content in there. So awesome. Thank Thanks, you guys so for much for this. And for everyone that's watching, last thing I'll say is someone that has truly been through it all is this girl here. So She has some wise nuggets in there. So thank you guys so much. And Kate, thank thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.